Good afternoon, this is the latest video update on still two typhoons here in the Western Pacific, Typhoon Tembin, about to make landfall in Taiwan and Typhoon Bolivin quickly moving away from Okinawa and about to move into the uh, Korean Peninsula. We continue to see the system here in this latest infrared image and you can see the massive circulation of uh, Typhoon Bolivin moving into the East China Sea and again uh, setting the Korean Peninsula on its sights. It made landfall in Okinawa early last night. Uh, it's a powerful Category 3 typhoon. And here we have Typhoon Tembin weakening to a Category 1, but uh, still continuing to pose a very big threat, uh, not only in terms of strong winds, but also for uh, heavy rain across uh, much of Taiwan in the next two days. And now uh, we go into Tembin, uh, lastly approximately 450 kilometers south southwest of Taipei, Taiwan, or about 300 kilometers uh, west northwest of Basco Batanes, or about 320 kilometers uh, north northwest of Lawag City here in the, the Philippines. We have the maximum sustained winds are at 140 kilometers per hour with gusts of up to 195 kilometers per hour. System is uh, moving slowly eastward at 10 kilometers per hour, but should start turning more to the northeast, and uh, again could make landfall along the southeastern uh, southern tip of Taiwan in the next 12 hours. You can see in this latest satellite image the uh, poor satellite representation of the system barely looks typhoon actually at the moment. Um, uh, no eye. Uh, the outflow has been restricted to the south of the system. We are still seeing some uh, good convection along the southeastern quadrant. Again, uh, the eye is no longer visible on uh, either the visible and the infrared image. Um, although the uh, latest microwave image does suggest that the eye wall still remains intact, uh, particularly along the lower levels of the system. Um, again, uh, the heaviest convection remains now on the southern side of the system and um, continues to uh, weaken, probably remain a typhoon, maintain typhoon intensity right up to landfall. But typhoon or not, this will still pose a very big threat across Taiwan and already we have uh, extremely heavy rain across the entire island and also typhoon warnings being issued by the Central Weather Bureau. You can see the agencies placing many counties, particularly along the central and southern portions of the island, under a sea and land typhoon warning. And also, again, the entire island covered by extremely heavy rain advisory, uh, varying only by intensity, some are heavy rain. The uh, highest warning be extremely torrential rain, uh, situated particularly across the Walian, Taitung, uh, Pingtung, and also here in Kaohsiung counties. This is uh, the region where the mountainous uh, um, areas are, are located, so a very big threat for um, heavy rains across uh, these re uh, this areas in the next two days. The system will move inland later tonight and will track slowly along the east uh, eastern uh, portion portions of Taiwan, so those inflow bands bringing uh, possibly bringing torrential rainfall in this country. So um, in terms of the rainfall, could probably see another 500 millimeters of rain. Remember, Typhoon Tembin made landfall a few days ago here in Taiwan and dropped 500 to even 600 millimeters of rain in some portions here. And unfortunately, another uh, round of uh, heavy rains uh, moving in. And in fact, already we are starting to see some rains forming here in the radar from Taiwan, some outer bands moving across the southern portions of Taiwan um, and will only obviously get heavier as the night goes on and even actually the rains will extend extends as far south as Luzon, uh, Lawag and Baguio City or also reporting uh, rainfall amounts of 50 to even 100 millimeters and uh, in fact winds wind reports here in Lawag are uh, ranging from 30 to 40 kilometers per hour with gusts of up to 60 kilometers per hour at times so even the eye is well away from the system I mean, the, the center of the, of the system is, uh, is far away from Luzon. They are feeling some, uh, some stormy conditions in, in the region. But uh, the, again, uh, the um, main threat will be for Taiwan in the next two days. Batanes group of islands may see some heavy rains and uh, gusty winds as well. But the strongest will be confined across the southern and central portions of Taiwan. And I got a forecast now from JDWC showing the system making landfall as a typhoon perhaps turn, uh, later tonight or perhaps by the uh, early morning hours uh, by Tuesday along uh, the southern tip probably near the city of Hengshun and again tracking east of Taiwan weakening to a tropical storm by Tuesday 
uh, and then moving northward perhaps moving near Shanghai by um, Thursday afternoon as a weak tropical storm and then making landfall here in Shandong Peninsula here in north uh, eastern China on Friday night now JMA is uh, has a different somewhat different forecast track actually taking Tembin right into eastern China south of Shanghai uh, same timing roughly uh, making landfall here by Thursday afternoon also as a tropical storm you can also see JMA forecasting a landfall in the next 12 hours or so both uh, agencies will take uh, is forecasting to take Tembin to the north weakening along the way tropical storm or even a tropical depression as we get into the latter part of um, this week so um, as for again as for right now the main threat will remain across Taiwan eventually uh, interest along eastern China should continue to monitor and even actually across the Korean Peninsula remember they are you are still under the uh, cone of error by both um, forecast tracks from JT, JDWC and JMA so um, we could also see some effects uh, across South and North Korea in uh, the next few days from the system now moving on to the other typhoon we have Bolivin now weakening to category 1 as it moves across East China Sea last look at approximately 550 uh, kilometers northwest of um, Okinawa or about 360 kilometers south southwest of the island of Jeju here in South Korea. Maximum sustained winds also at 140 kilometers per hour with gusts of up to 195 kilometers per hour. You can also see the system has accelerated quite a bit now moving north northwestward at 30 kilometers per hour and is expected to take more in a northerly track in the next uh, 12 hours. Again, will remain a typhoon as it uh, as it moves north, but probably weakening to a tropical storm just before landfall in North Korea uh, early Tuesday evening. Now remember the system made landfall here in Okinawa yesterday at approximately uh, 7 uh, 30 Japan time as a category 3 typhoon very strong winds reported although uh, we barely actually saw reports of typhoon force the highest gust we found was around here in south of Amami with a gust of 160 kilometers per hour we may have missed some reports here or there although an airport here in northern Okinawa actually reported a minimum barometric pressure of 934 millibars so very low pressure as the eye moved across the system early last night giving an idea how intense the system was despite the lack of typhoon force uh, winds being reported by the official stations by JMA now again the system is moving across the East China Sea weakening to a category 1 uh, along the cooler waters you can see the eye is now gone but still a very big circulation uh, from the system and continues to actually bring rains across Okinawa and even into Kyushu and also rains beginning across uh, the um, island of Jeju and eventually into South Korea and uh, we got some uh, eyewitness reports from Okinawa this is from uh, fortunately an unnamed email only a uh, name of Bovinos Brazilian so whoever you are thank you for the images we uh, again the showing you the uh, high waves uh, being impacted, uh, being uh, generated by uh, Bolivinist move moved across the islands, very high waves there, and also uh, the visibilities are down, giving an idea of the of the uh, rainfall that probably occurring at that time, and also the rough seas um, from the system. And also, our fellow James Reynolds uh, actually went to um, Okinawa to intercept uh, Bolivin as it made landfall, and he too has some very good uh, footage uh, from uh, from the system you can head out on his YouTube channel to check that I will will leave a link on our uh, description below now going back to uh, Bolivin currently again you can see the enhanced infrared image giving an appreciation of how big actually the circulation is and as I said we are still seeing rains across Okinawa and even winds uh, still some sustained winds of up to 65 kilometers per hour with gusts of 80 kilometers per hour so and we we were expecting the tropical storm winds to last for a long time and uh, and we are we are still seeing reports of tropical storm winds unfortunately in terms of the effects there are only four injuries and no casualties thankfully although 66,000 house households currently have no power the very superficial damage if, if I may in terms of the uh, typhoon effects fortunately 
uh, no casualties. Now as the system moves uh, further northward, again it will weaken. We are seeing uh, more dry air wrapping into the circulation. Cloud tops are warming. See in this latest microwave image, much of the convective activity are now displaced along the northern side of the system, but still very strong bands of activity being reported from the satellite images and in fact again showing the latest radar from JMA confirming our observations of rains even heavy rains across Okinawa and into Amami probably uh, gonna be staying there for the next 6 to 12 hours and in fact now our airport reported already 200 millimeters of rain even Amami Island uh, the town of Naze, Naze recorded rainfall of 300 millimeters in the past 24 hours alone so very significant rainfall um, from the very big circulation of Bolivan and even actually into Kyushu we are seeing reports of uh, rains there as well you can see clusters of thunderstorms actually very heavy rain in, in some of those um, some of those spots uh, mostly isolated and quick hitting showers and um, not actually not under the uh, heavy intense bands uh, by uh, Bolivan now as you move north, this is the radar from uh, the Korean Meteorological Administration showing you bands of heavy now about to move into uh, the island of Jeju and some of those could bring as much as 20 to 30 millimeters of rainfall in an hour or so uh, and unfortunately the rains will continue in Jeju and eventually spread into the Korean Peninsula beginning here in South Korea later tonight and could last unfortunately into the next uh, two days expect rainfall amounts here to be nearly the same as those who reported in Okinawa so expect 300 millimeters or more a very uh, significant threat um, for North Korea as it makes landfall there uh, by Tuesday afternoon and you can see here the latest forecast from JMA bringing the system northward again making landfall here in North Korea probably passing near Pyongyang um, uh, by the evening as a tropical storm it will rapidly weaken as it moves across uh, China, uh, North Korea and then cross into China by Wednesday morning probably a tropical depression and it could start extra tropical transition at that time but again showing you the uh, wide circulation of the system we won't expect the rains to end until Wednesday at the very least so um, another big threat being posed by Bolivin after making landfall here in Okinawa. Before we end our video update, I just want to qu quickly mention what's happening on the other side of the globe. We are watching the tropics here in the Atlantic Basin as the tropical storm Isaac is uh, preparing actually to um, fall here in the United States in the next few days. It is currently located west of the Florida Peninsula. It moved over uh, Key West earlier this morning, local time here in the United States and it's still a tropical storm but it is expected to become a hurricane in the next 12-24 hours by the National Hurricane Center and you can see in this latest forecast track from the agency showing a perhaps a category 2 typhoon and look at that taking them right into the city of New Orleans in Louisiana very uh, eerie forecast if you remember seven years ago Katrina happened and made landfall here in uh, New Orleans uh, Wednesday so by uh, again Wednesday a very eerie scenario here seven year anniversary of that uh, of that hurricane uh, making landfall probably not gonna be as strong as uh, Katrina but still gonna be bringing some strong winds and heavy rains and also the system will be crawling across uh, the southern coast of New Orleans um, so you know those uh, those inflow winds from the system will be ushering uh, storm surges across the coastal cities and right now we already have hurricane warnings set up across um, Alabama, Mississippi and into New uh, Louisiana uh, most especially New Orleans well, some of the cities here have already declared states of uh, state of emergencies um, to to really mobilize their force in terms of evacuating uh, evacuating people so very really a serious scenario there as well you can Tune into our affiliate 28storms.com for the latest update on uh, the systems in uh, the Atlantic Basin. But that all, that's all for uh, our video update right now. If you are in South Korea, continue to keep uh, posted there as well. And also for Taiwan, as Tembin is about to make landfall there. Stay safe, guys. Bye-bye.